just if you could share, um, I'm interested to hear your thoughts on the discoveries that you've made in philanthropy, um, applying these mindsets and just the way you break down certain topics. Please, if you could share um, something about that world that you think mm. a lot of Muslims don't know that they should know or something that we can improve. Right. Great. So I think the first and foremost, it starts with, I would say that, the, you know, my, my personal thing would be like, okay, pick a cause, one or two cause and, you know, get involved in that. Because otherwise there's a lot of noise out there, right? Something as simple as, for example, if you, if you are like, you know, 10,000 feet away from the Dawa field, then you may be thinking, well, Dawa is about, you know, arguments and Hyde Park and debates and the number of shahadas, right? As, as we talked about in today's episode, Hopefully, if I got clear, that's that's just like the the fancy dawa. There's way more that happens, you know, when you when you hit the ground in terms of the simpleness of dawa, in terms of focusing after the shahada and so on and so forth. So, so understand the problem, right? Because if you are ten thousand, hundred thousand feet away from it, you're not gonna understand. The second thing is, uh, you know, how we donate, right? Figure out the charities that you will donate to. You know, understand what they're doing, what their impact is, right? Uh, and obviously, like, have a percentage, right? So as Allah gives you more, your donation should, inshallah, also increase. So whether it be the 2.5% or 10% of your excess wealth or 33% of it or whatever it is, you know, have some sort of a goal. And then reach out to one or two or three organizations, understand their impact. But don't only just understand their impact. Look at the efficiency ratio. So let's say if I say, you know what, uh, I build like 1,000 homes in Syria, for example, or, or for Syrian refugees, and it took me like, you know, $10 million to do that. And some other organization says that, uh, oh, we did it for a million dollars, same quality of homes. So you probably want to understand what's going on under like, uh, underneath the surface, right? So, so one of the, some of the things that, that are happening is, you know, that, that's, I find problematic. And again, I don't know if there's a solution. I know there are some organizations that don't do it. And I'm planning to do one of those as well, where everything related to fundraising or what have you should be coming from other sources. So either the co-founders are paying for it or the directors are paying for it or their friends are paying for it. Most of the time what happens is that you don't have a choice as a donor. And, uh, you know, let's say if you donate $1,000 for orphan or $100 for orphan, how much is it making? So you have to understand the journey of that dollar, right? Some of that is mm. going to Facebook and YouTube and Instagram and these ads and the marketers, right? So my, my thing, and I don't have a great answer for this, but if the Muslim philanthropy fund is fixed, right, and most Muslims have a set amount of money that they donate, so that means the fund is fixed, then are the charities competing among each other and paying YouTube and Google and uh, social media like millions of dollars to just to compete among themselves or what's going on? And who, who is paying those millions of dollars? Is this coming from the donor's money, right, which they intend to give to a particular cause and it's coming without their consent because it's just the way things work? Or is this coming from grants? Is this coming from the founders and their friends? Um, is this coming, another thing that people have in, for example, UK, they have gift aid, right? So someone may mm. be using gift aid money, uh, but that's essentially donor's money as well, right? It's coming from their taxes mm. and you may say zero admin, but then you're using gift aid for, you know, marketing and whatnot. So these are some open questions that people need to think about and, you know, dig into and see what options are there and not just like whichever is attractive. So, so these are some of the things I would also avoid clicking on ads and then paying via that. I personally would avoid paying at fundraisers, right? Because these things to me are extra costs that are not, you know, charitable events. I would like to discourage those things and I would like to directly go and, and pay to a charity and discourage these, you know, external uh, social things that are just like, especially if it's coming from donors' money. Mm -hmm. And lastly, to maximize your tax benefits. So especially in Canada, like I know a lot of people, they donate and they don't get tax receipts. Uh, I don't think that's a wise way of doing things. And I want to know it's best because tax money is your money. That's with the government. So you should take that. If you don't want to utilize it, you can put it back into the charity. But why leave it on the table for government, right? It's, it's something that government mm -hmm. is allowing you to do. So why leave like those like, hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, on the tax table. Yeah, exactly. I think um, Islamic Finance Guru, they had a, a guide that came out last year where they broke down, I think, 30 different charities in various different sectors. Some of them were supporting um, widowed women. 
Some of them were supporting uh, new converts to Islam. Some of them were like the popular ones, like Islamic Relief and things like that. So I think what you mentioned, they gave them like a score. Obviously, it's just according to Islamic finance guru, but it's a step in the right direction of trying yes. to get people to understand these charities and if it's the best use of their money. And um, also, I think you touched on it where growing up, I used to see all of these competing uh, charities. And back in that day, it was mostly on TV, like especially in Ramadan, like one uh, advert followed by another, followed by another. And I used to think, why aren't they just cooperating? Obviously, quite naively, I was thinking that. But I think the temptation is for someone when they start something small, like let's say if I say, oh, I can start a charity and just start in like the village in Pakistan or something, right? And it feels a lot more organic and close to the core, uh, close on the ground, because it's like I can literally just take money from a friend and have it in my hand, fly on a plane and actually give it, right? So I think it starts from a good place. But then what you have to understand is if you're actually intending on making this into like a bigger charity, you're going to face the same challenges of scale and everything and like adverts and all the rest of it. So it comes down the line, I guess. So that we have to think of a way of uh, kind of mitigating those challenges.